uh, okay uh, first please uh, welcome our uh, guest uh, isabel isabel is uh, born in seville andalusia from spain uh, studied fine art uh, She's related to uh, the architectural uh, hub. Uh, she was hoping to study architecture. That's true. And then changed her, her mind and went for fine arts. Uh, still, uh, fine art is uh, the, one of the closest field to the architecture. Uh, we want to see today, uh, uh, we want to walk with Isabel in her journey today. Uh, and hear from her uh, about her art and uh, Andalusia's art and Spain's art. Please welcome uh, Isabel. Isabel, the floor is yours. Um, hello, everybody. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a, an honor and a pleasure. And um, also to speak to an architectural community it's kind of challenging because I admire it so much and it's been like um, a thing that I've always admired all my life that I, I feel a little bit anxious. So excuse me if, if, uh, if I make any mistakes. Well, as Abdullah said, I am from Sevilla, the capital of Andalusia. I grew up surrounded by um, Muslim architecture and, and uh, Romans architecture and Christian architecture. It's a very beautiful city um, near, to the, near to the river, to the sea. And I think it, it, it's very related to art. And I've always been, ever since I was a little girl, I don't know if Slim can put a picture of, of Sevilla. I wanted you uh, to show. Uh, yeah, on that yeah. screen right, right now, let me uh, share the screen for you. Yeah. <clears throat> and then about Andalusian art, really, what can I say? Other than we have um, 15th century, 13th century, 17th century, great, great artists and architects, especially painters. And although I, I grew up surrounded by arts in my family, nobody were really interested in art they were all more like lawyers and businessmen and, and uh, to a woman of my age who wanted to be an artist it was a, was a little bit um a little bit over the top so i had to study history of art before so i did a five years career and then i went to london to study i always painted as a hobby ever since i was a little girl i had my own studio in my house in sevilla but never really um, dedicated my my work and my main life in working until I came back from London. I worked for two or three years in Christie's and then I decided that what I really wanted to do was to, to paint. So I started doing mural paint and uh, wall decorations and furniture decorations until the 2002, the crisis came and I never knew when I was going to be commissioned a, a a living room or a dining room or a hall. So I decided, I, I started doing abstract. It was, and then it's how the cosmogonies, you can change to the next slim, to the next. He's sharing the screen with me. So the cosmogonies were born out of a necessity. I had to, to paint, to express myself, to, um, to change from figurativism. I, I used to do before that, I used to do landscapes and, and animals and, and uh, really more plants and more figurative um, works. And it was all like a new beginning for me. It was a sort of a hard decision because it was a big change. I had to, I, I, I gave it a go. And I decided that I, um, I wanted to I also wanted it to be um, sort of ecological. I, I, I will explain this later. What I was, um, the name of the cosmogonies is, um, it's a, it's a two ways, it's a two ways uh, thing. 
in in one sense, they the the paintings that came out. I didn't know what the what what was coming out of me. I knew that I wanted to inspire in nature and by nature, by water, by grass, by earth, by air, by rainforest. I knew there was something that I had to do with that, but I also wanted it to be ecological. And it, and it came out as a very cosmic sort of paintings. Some of them with me realizing it and some of it without, without even me realizing it. And so when I had to do um, a solo exhibition and they asked me that I had to give them a name and I was, I was a little bit shocked because I, didn't, I hadn't thought of a name for myself, for my painting. So I thought, it, well, this is a new genesis for me. This is a new beginning. And in other ways, it's like a cosmos. It's like a new origin. So I looked it up in the dictionary to see if the, the word cosmogene, cosmogenesis, was a real one and it, and it, and it existed. It came from Greeks and it, it, big, it, it means the, um, the beginning of, of, of the cosmos. Oh, oops. So I would see the next. Um, they, they're also, because they're very organic, all, I also wanted to um, make a call of attention to nature. I, um, I wanted to work with the materials myself. I wanted to be natural uh, materials. I wanted to be um, organic uh, pigments and colors. The texture that I use normally, it's uh, sand. Sands, people nowadays, people send me sands and seaweeds from, from all over. But at the beginning I was, I had to go to the street or to the countryside to collect. I did like my own collection for the textures. And then I ordered in a special place the, the dyes and the, how do you call the polder, the, the pigments to make it. And uh, well, I, I had to give it many, many tries to see how it glued together, if it worked all right. And that's how they were born, the cosmogonies. And basically are what you see they are a big format. They're, I don't know why else you have a lot of square and round, round format because, um, because of the cosmic sort of look. And uh, I also did in triptychs and diptychs and, um, and that's, uh, oh yes. And um, although they're abstract, they always come from nature and they always sort of represent nature. And uh, you, you can see that, although you don't know what you're seeing, but it, it rings a bell. It rings a bell of something of, of, of nature. It could, it could be a sea, it could be a coral reef, it could be a cloud, it could be a pond, it could be the stars. So it's, it's an abstract painting, but it's sort of a, um, how, would you, how would I call it? Not figurative abstract, that's impossible, but um, oniric or, or uh, Realistic abstract, let's say. And um, ecologic, the landscape. Can, can we change the screen, please? Yeah. Oh, yes, these are the one on the left inspired in the North Sea. It's darker colors and it's grayer. That's the moon. I've, I did a series of the moon years ago. I still have, I think, two, three. They're, huge. They're quite big. And it's, uh, yeah, it's all, they're also meant to be a back to basics, back to origin. Now that everything is so computerized, so um, um, technolo technolo technologized, which technology is very good. I mean, it's, thanks to technology, we, we, we move on in life. But sometimes with so much technology and we are, everything is so easy and so accessible, that sometimes we, we forget what we are, where we come from, and, and, and the contact with nature and, and to, to take care of nature. It's, it's quite important in, in my art. Next, please. Ah, yes, that's a, those are the, the figurative paintings that you, you saw where, where I come from, where it came from. And I, I also take um, notice not only of the infinite towards the, the huge, but also towards the minimal. If you, if you grab a, a little piece of that 
tiny painting. It could be a whole cosmogony itself. So it's always interested me, the infinite towards the universe and towards the microscope and the, the cells, the neurons, the DNA, all that. It's, it's amazingly similar. So, so such a big difference in size and so alike when you, when you look it through a microscope. It, it just fascinates me. Next. Uh, those are the ponds. Those are part of the cosmogonies. are the water cosmogonies. Um, the color and, and the light. It's always important in, in my work. More than maybe perspective or or uh, yeah more than perspective I, I was never a very <laughs> mathematical person that's why i didn't do architecture but i like the the organic kind of feeling that you can that you that you feel that what you're watching it's a piece of nature that it could change at any moment and it depending on what time of the day you look at it or how does the light come out it, it can change it it's like they're like alive in a, in a way. They're, they're not alive because they're still, but it, they're sort of organic life uh, works of art. Next, please. Those are the materials. Uh, on the left-hand side, the blue ones, oh, those are leaves for, from, from a tree that I have outside my house. In spring, has a lot, a lot, a lot of, of these seeds. I have to collect tons and tons just to to make maybe one painting because they I have to make I have to do a treatment so that they reduce and they dry properly they don't break so it's something that I got it from nature and and I I give it back to nature maybe transformed and I like to work with my hands that sort of same way as back to basics back to classic back to artisanal work working with my hands feeling the material and the red one on the right hand side, it's uh, from the tree, the, the, I don't know how you call it, the, the carcass from the tree, mm -hmm. um, collected and, and picked, and then dyed in, into red. And all the material that I use, apart from maybe sometimes a, a varnish, but they're all uh, water and organic materials. More, please. Oh, yes, maybe you are asking yourselves if, if I have exhibitions, if I have made exhibitions, how when I started, I started in Spain, obviously. And then I had, I had a small exhibition. I was very afraid and suddenly everything was sold out. And then uh, they asked me to have, make an exhibition in, uh, at the UBS um, Art Foundation. And then a dealer from New York asked me to work with her if I want. And she brought me to this um, amazing exhibition that took place in New York in the Johnson & Johnson Foundation. And we were two artists. The other artists had to do the human part and I was commissioned to do the human, um, the nature. nature. Yeah, so it was the human nature. And I had to do the skies, the well the seas and the, the grass and the green and it was a it was really uh, important and very thrilling to me because it was like it was something it was one step farther it was something seriously serious not a, not an exhibition to sell which is always good but an exhibition in a public institution so like it was a, an important recognition to me and to my to my um, how do you say self-esteem as a as an artist? And then came the Meninas two years ago. Can you? Those were public sculptures commissioned by the um, townhouse of Madrid. They were 80 all around the city, made 85, I think, made by different kind of artists. So we were like 10, 10, 15 painters couple of sculptures there was there were singers there were famous people as well I, I'm not I'm not that famous I mean but it was like uh, singers and fashion designers people from the cultural world in general mine was in the in the library so I was very proud of 
I, I like reading and I think culture is very important. So I had a place of honor and it was called the Menina. It's the, this form of, of, of lady. Uh, it was a princess uh, of the 18th, uh, 17th century that Velázquez, one of the most important painters we've had, along with Goya and Picasso, he painted the Meninas and it has become a symbol of, of, of the city. That's why they made this sculpture. And I did it with the cosmogonies, with all the leaves. I wanted to be feminine because the, the word Menina in Spanish, it's like femenina. So I, I, I played with the word fe means faith. So I thought fe and menina, faith in the feminine. And I did it like very springly and with leaves. And, and, uh, and it was, it was, then it was, it was auctioned. It was, um, it was a, how, how do you call it? Benefic? Beneficio? Como se dice? Uh, even, um, when, it, when it's an auction, when you got what you collect, you give it to, to a charity. It was a charity auction. Yep. Next, please. If I speak very quickly, you tell me, because I get carried away. Okay, then after the cosmogonies, which, which I, I still sometimes do, and because they, they change, I, if I try to make a cosmogony as the ones I did years ago, I don't know how, but I cannot make them the same. They're, they, they're changing. But then I wanted to, um, to do completely the opposite. I had many rests of uh, many jars with uh, rests of paint that I didn't want to throw away. It was like I had a collection of hundreds of tiny little uh, um, jars of uh, colors. And I thought that I would make an exercise of uh, concentration to do the opposite that I was doing, but, but also in the same language. So I wanted to do landscapes, but in a very, um, they're in a very sort of compressed way. They're called barcoded landscapes, also in a play with the, with the barcoded society that everything, you pass it, beep, and we're all coded and, and it's all like a denaturalization of, of, of even nature. So those are brothers to the cosmogonies because they, they come from their colors and it's like the, it's like the, the, the zoom or the compression or the coding of, of the cosmogonies. No texture, they're very, they're very flat, they're very shiny. And it, it was like, I, was, I was playing with the, with the opposites. Next, please. Oh yes, those are more uh, barcoded landscapes. If you if you could make a very close up, you could see that every uh, fringe, every th certain two three lines, it's a, a new different landscape. Those are quite big, actually. Those are very long and large. And then I also have diptychs. I like to play with the, with the lines and. Um, vertical and horizontal and those are very hard work to do so you have to be very concentrated okay. yeah <laughs> and the textures on the other hand as in the and in the barcode landscapes i had the the um the colors left i had the textures so i thought that i could make this i could make like another daughter son of the cosmogonies compressing the textures as if it was like in a tree but it, it's a tree completely um changed by human it's nature dyed in blue and made it square and and also compressed and um that's why they're so square they're rough you can you can tell there's nature in them but they're they're sort of uh compressed and blue, I do a lot of blue. I don't know why. I like blue. <laughs> oh, and those are the last, my last series. I'm, I'm still working on that. I haven't completely developed that series. I, it was um, rounding my mind for a long time to do uh, microgonies microgon like in a microscope. Like the, if you... If you if you watch water or cells and, and you can see that it's a whole universe. And I did these just before the COVID and when, every, when 
it was like January or February when people saw it and everyone was like, oh, you're doing the COVID, you're doing it. No, I wasn't doing the COVID, it's a coincidence. But something in the back of my mind was already um, dealing with, uh, that we play too much with nature, that we're not respect, respectful enough with nature. And we should stop ourselves a little bit and think and, um, and try to, to get on better with nature, I think. Next, please. This is my homage to you architects. I have always, um, I'm always very picky about where my paintings go, how are they lit. I, uh, I think architecture is, if you can have a wonderful painting, if the architecture doesn't help or the lightning, there's nothing you can do. To me, it's absolutely vital to have a, a perfect marriage between the architecture, the, 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 the painting, the sculpture, the ambience, the, the volumes, the light. I'm very good with volumes, I think. I mean, uh, watching, seeing them. I don't know how to, probably, I, couldn't, um, I wasn't able to, to design it uh, as an architect, but I, I need to feel where my, where my words go. And the, the, those are two pictures of two exhibitions I had. No, the, the, on the left hand, it's, it's a shooting for a magazine. And the right hand side, it's a, an ex a wonderful gallery in Madrid called uh, Alvaro Alcázar. And he, he has this uh, wonderful gallery that anything you, you put, it's like, oh, it goes like that. That's a diptych, you can see it. Yeah. And those are the paintings that I've been doing in, in the confinement. I don't know if you in Doha have been locked, locked, literally, we've been locked down at home. We have not been able to go out for three months. It's been a little bit over the top. We could go to buy milk and come back, but a little less. And I, I could not go to my studio, so I didn't have all my, my materials. But I always, because I don't like throwing away things, I like to recycle and reuse things. I had these little pieces of, of uh, uh, how do you, a wood from, from a kitchen, from, from, a, from, a, from a top of the kitchen, they're, they're small. And I started, people were longing for landscapes. So I started doing again, compressed landscapes. So that's why they're called, they can find landscapes because they're in a very tiny space and they're one on top of the other and very compressed one of the other. And um, I will make, I would probably make an, an exhibition of, of the small ones. So those are my classical landscapes. That's where I come from. That's where I always go when I'm tired or when I, when I feel um, a little bit thick headed or um, saturated by, by, by the textures and the colors. And I don't know what stain, the balance is very important. So I go, I go away and I always, I don't know why I always do a cold landscape, always like gray and snow and like air. And it goes, it brings me back to where I come from. And I always, I will, I will always do this. I think I will always make my landscapes. These are huge. The one on the left, it's a huge one actually. Next, please. Ah, and now I'm going to talk about when I was in Doha, in, uh, in Qatar. It was, um, it was an ex a Spanish exhibition. It was an exhibition of Spanish artists in January in Qatar. It was absolutely wonderful, thrilling to go to Doha. Finally, I was dying to, to know Doha, to see all all the architectures, all the museums, the rows of the desert, everything was amazing. I was like a little girl, I had like not having time. And we had to present five, five paintings. I actually took six, but okay. And I wanted to make like in six paintings to explain what you do. It's, and with a month and a half of anticipation, it wasn't very much. So I started by landscape and then I, I started then I went to a more abstract landscape and ended up by a barcode landscape going through the cosmogonies. I did the Alhambra 
first because it's a building I have grown up watching it in Granada. My family from my father is from Granada. And it was also a, a homage to go, as I was going to an Arab country, I, I, I wanted to show them how proud and how much we enjoy the Alhambra with the, with the snowy, with the snow uh, mountains at the back. And it's such a wonderful architectural building that I thought, what, what better to put a landscape to go to, to, to Doha. So I did this one and then I did Spanish, a canoe, canoe, which is the next one. I don't know if I put them all. I, I, I only put four. Then I was, there's the, the green Latin landscape on the right hand side above. It's a landscape, but it's still not that abstract. Then the cosmogony, it's like a more abstract one. And then the compressed uh, uh, bark coated landscape. And I, I wanted to do it in a sort of similar colors because they were going to go all together. And I'd, I wanted to be blue and green. And there you go. I hope you, I don't know if you, those paintings are still in, um, they're still in Katara because they were going to be sent back in March. But with the, with the COVID, with the coronavirus, they're still there. So if any of you want to go and, and visit them, they have them kept in, in the Katara cultural city. And um, I think they have like maybe 70 paintings from um, different Spanish artists. I, mine are there as well. So if you have time and you want to go, be air conditioner, I'm sure. <laughs> More, please. Oh yes, those are the photos of the of the visa. That's the Spanish ambassadors. There were many, many people came. It was really that's me explaining my paintings. There were cameras. It was on. It was on TV. It was on news. It was all over. And on the left, you have like two of of my paintings. There you go. <laughs> I I do you know that I. I put, I put on the red and the white by, by casualty. I didn't know the, the flag of Qatar was red and, and white. I was wearing white because I like to wear white whenever I have a, an exhibition or something, I like to wear white. But I had the red, it was, it was not on purpose, but I was so happy I chose the red. So, <laughs> well, that's a, well, I think, I don't, and those are the galleries. If one work with um, two galleries in Madrid, which is Barbara, um, sorry, Soraya Cartategui and Alvaro Alcázar, and also my art dealers, Barbara, in New York. And I also work through my, through my own studio. So I, ha I work with those two galleries, but I don't have exclusivity with them. Whenever I make an exhibition with them, it's always with them. And if it's a, if it's a, a commission on, on, on my own, I work on my own. I have a new studio as well in Madrid. I, I haven't made the inauguration yet because I have the kitchen to finish. It was also stopped by the COVID. So I hopefully in G July, I will finish it. Maybe in September, I will do the, the, um, the vernissage. I will, I will put it in the internet so you can all see it. And I think that's it. I've, po I've spoken a lot of time. <laughs> 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 Any questions? Oh, I've been speaking for like half an hour or more. Type the tabula and you mute yourself. Pardon me? You talk to me? No, no, no I'm speaking to Akte Kabula. He's ah. muted. Ah. I thought I'm muted by you because I tried to, <laughs> I tried to open it and press the close. So, question. Hello, Abdullah. I cannot hear you very well. You're like in a can. You're inside the can. No. <laughs> <laughs> it it sounds very metal. <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? No. Yes. No. Still. Okay. Now. Yeah. Okay, where, 
Any question? I don't see any question. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Itabel, for your presentation and your wonderful, Thank you, Slim. wonderful works and uh, how you are speaking about them chronologically, like it's the history, how you start, how you modify. It was really interesting. And I want to ask, since all your painting, your painting are made with natural elements like sand, uh, leaves, and you know those elements with the, with the time are changing and uh, with the metamorphosis, they will change not, a bit. Not so, the sand, not yes. the sand, not the sand. Yes. We, there's a lot of noise. Uh, obviously with the leaves and all that, I have to give a, a treatment, special treatment. That's why mm -hmm. I said before that if I collect like a huge amount of leaves and then I put them into dye and they have to dry and then I wet them and then I, I boil them, they, they become really hard. Mm -hmm. I also give them with re, re, resin, ¿cómo se dice? Resa, resina, resin, resin. 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 Yeah. They have to have a special treatment. But with wood, there's not, there's no problem with wood because I work a lot with, with wood. So, and like, this is, this is, um, ¿cómo se dice? Lienzo. This is a uh, canvas. But I work a lot with, um, with, uh, with wood. And it's like, you see pieces of furniture who are 500 years, I mean, obviously you have to be careful, you have to give a special treatment. And it's quite hard. That, yeah. That's why I, I, I didn't bring any with textures to Qatar because I had to roll them and they cannot be ro rolled. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're very stiff and they're heavy. Okay, so by, by the time you've, your painting are not changing by the time. The painting, the colors. No, 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 no. Well, I haven't lived 200,000 years, but I hope not. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. So, so no. We, we, can, we can consider your painting much more like classic, since they, are, uh, they will stay, they will keep at least the same at, uh, appearance, not uh, in ephemeral uh, art. I never thought about it that way, but I, I, I think you, you can. I, I come from the classics and I always go back to classics. And even when you look at them, they're, they, uh, yes, I think um, they're not that modern. I yes, think they're modern. They're yes, not that modern in a way. It's a, it's a revolution inside the classic. Probably, Somehow. probably, God hear you, maybe. I don't know, it's <laughs> not for me to say. Uh, from the years ahead, they will have to say. Yes, yeah. because you are keeping the same shape of a classical art. A painting, which is which will go, will keep the same the same appearance for a long time, but it's not a classic. It's not uh, portrayal. It's not uh, nature. It's uh, behind the nature. No. I don't know. I mean, I I, I, I give said. a lot of thought. This is what yeah. I get when I see your painting. That's what you feel. I yeah. love it when people tell me what they feel when they see my paintings because not everybody feels the same. And I'm sure, I'm sure if I will see it directly with, with the texture, I will get another feeling. Ah, uh, yeah, that's one thing. It's, it's big. the ones who have texture, especially, they're completely different once you watch them on live than in a, in a photo. I don't like when, when clients tell me, send me a photo and they want a texture one. I, I try not to, I, I try to convince them to come and see them in natural because it's completely different and they need a lot yeah. of lightning. They need a very uh, powerful uh, light. Even if uh, they will change with the di direction of light, they will change with the shape. Yes, they change, they change, they do, they do. They do, that's why I call them organic because they're sort of, I'm, I'm watching one there and it's like changing color from two hours ago till now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Some... now, <laughs> now I yeah. want to, to see one of them. Can you send for me take it to Spain? Uh, can I what? Yeah. <laughs> send me take it to Spain, I will care. I will if I Your could, studio. yeah. Yes, or send me an airplane, you're... send me an airplane to Spain. I will pack all my painting. I will go to Doha. I want to go again to Doha. You're welcome, I you're will... welcome. Anyway. <laughs> Isabel, 
Hey, oh my Hello. God, a question. Oh, okay. My name is Nestor. Hello, Nestor. Nice pres- to meet you. Let me present myself. I was invited Hello. by Omeima. I had uh, the chance to assist uh, your to your exposition, your gallery in Doha. I work in the Embassy of Spain, and we were invited by Ambassador. Uh, so ah, it's, yeah. it's, it's very well to 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 have you here again in this meeting organized ah, by wonderful. the Harbor Afri- Architecture. So yeah. uh, let me express my my gratitude. Thank you. And uh, you also make us. Uh, very proud of having a Spanish uh, artist representation to Doha in Qatar. It was very important for us to have the support of, of the Spanish embassy in, uh, in Doha. But because when we went there, we didn't know very well what, what we to expect or if we had any, any problems, what would happen. And it was, it was like very reassuring. And also Abdullah has been a great, great help because at one time we thought we we had lost the painting and I was almost crying. I was in Spain. I don't know where my painting was. It was a huge painting. Oh, really? oh. <laughs> yeah, they're still in, they're still in Doha because with the COVID, um, they were meant to be back in March the 20th, I think. So all yes. the, all the, all the flights were, were stopped. Yes, so uh, yeah. Yes, cancelled restrictions. Yes, I know. Cancel, I was yeah. following your, your, your presentation, uh, even if I'm in the street. So uh, very good. Yes, uh, I, uh, when I, when you were showing your paintings, Thank I could, uh, uh, I was recalling them uh, from the from the from uh, this Qatar exposition. Uh, they're very nice, very nice, and also the, the way you 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 explain them uh, to the participants. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not good, very good with talking. I talk a lot, but uh, I'm better at painting. <laughs> uh, don't be modest. You 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 did very well. Um, I cannot see you. I see a black screen, but uh, I know yeah, you're... because I'm in the, I'm in I'm in the street. Uh, I was not ah. able to download uh, Zoom at first. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, but uh, finally, I could do it. Okay. We're here. Um, so, if anybody you, wants any, if, if I understood well, you're expecting coming to Doha, maybe 2021. I love to. If they invite me, I will go back again. Absolutely, yes. That's good. Absolutely. And I have okay. friends living there and working there, so I would love That's to. That's good. That's good. So we'll uh, expect you, you'll be coming here again, Isabel. I hope to see you again, Nestor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salim. Go ahead, Salim. No voice. I hear you. No, I was ju- I was just telling to uh, to Isabel when you came to Doha you have a new friend here. I do. I have a lot of friends in Doha. New wonderful friends who help me with my computer because I'm a disaster <laughs> and I freak out. I go, oh, oh, they haven't sent me the same code as yesterday. How do I do this? I have to write a lot of things. I have no time. <laughs> no, no. Any time. Can hi? Can I can I ask a question? Yes. Okay? Hello. Yeah, well, hello. Hi, first of all, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you. My 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 grandmother was a was an artist as well, so I've always sort of felt very comfortable uh, hearing from artists and, and listening to artists. Um, mm-hmm. What I wanted to ask you, or what I wanted to say, was I yes. think it happens so often or too often that yes. an artist an artist's work is only really appreciated, you know, um, in you know sort of when they're kind of in the past is when we really look at an artist's work and start to break it down and really sort of digest it. So I just wanted to ask you how you would like your art to be perceived or understood in the next 100, 200, 300 years. Oh, that's very interesting. I've, I've thought about that. There are so many artists nowadays. I am, if I, the thing is that it's, I mean, I don't, if it's very difficult to say without looking not uh, modest. I would like to, when, whenever I see a, p- a painting by Goya, for example, I see it so actual, so beautifully, so modern in a way that I'd say when you see a classical sculpture or a beautiful building, if it's good and if it's well done, 
it's not about it doesn't become old fashioned or can become an antique but you you still see the reality and the and the essence of the true beauty of it so uh, i would if i mean if uh, if the cosmo i would like my grandchildren or maybe even more see oh my grand great great grandmother was the one who did the cosmogonies in a, in a time where everybody was doing digital uh, printing and and um, uh, technolo- uh, video con- video uh, performances and she was still doing like the cla- back to the classical uh, art because I think art in, at the end of the day comes from the from the soul of the human being and it goes with the time and the human being no matter how much we have, we uh, evol- uh, evolve we're always mm-hmm. human we have the same feelings maybe we will live 20 years more than than 100 years ago but the feelings are the same mm-hmm. and the human brain is the same and nature is the same we're part of the nature so mm-hmm. i i would like my art to be part of humanity very much so uh, um, i don't know if i answered yeah, like, by that no um, yeah no i mean yeah no i really enjoyed the the depth uh in the answer i also enjoyed the fact that you um you know, you mentioned the fact that, you know, your grandkids will, you know, hopefully you want them to look at this and, and be proud. And I resonate with that because I also imagine that, that, you know, when my grandmother was painting, I also imagine that part of that was also for us, her grandkids to enjoy in the, in the future generations. So, um, yeah, no, I, I really appreciate that answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wonderful question. It was a wonderful question. It made me think, you know, I would think about that more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Isabel. Hello. Uh, you use sometimes chemical color or all your works are with uh, nature? Pardon uh, me? Do I sometimes what? Sorry? Uh, do you sometimes use some uh, chemical colors or it's all uh, natural? Well, I buy shame I don't have my materials here to show you I buy I go to to the university actually to buy some of my, of my folders and I always ask for organic uh, organic pigments and they give me a, a, a plastic bag that plastic bag that says organic pigment blue blah blah obviously there might be something chemical about it but it says organic what I don't use is oils or strong or strong um, um, or silicones or strong things that are very contaminant everything comes from nature even plastic comes from 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 nature it's it's more how we use it and the way we use it I don't use anything that that eliminates gas you know um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know the technical words in English I should learn this um, like the blue, I brought, I brought the blue in Morocco. I came with kilos and kilos of sand. Exactly. This is what I want to say to you, because we have in Tunisia some powders. Yes. Skip colors, the green, the yellow. Uh, we have some kind of henna. Green, which... green I don't have. Please send me some mm-hmm. green. <laughs> okay, I'll share with you some of the yeah. because, uh, I remember my grandmother, she, uh, she's making carpet by hand. Mm-hmm. And and she bought the the how to say it uh, the, the 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 material all white, and she makes the colors at ho- at home. At home, with the blue, with the, the, the blue with uh, some powder called nila. It's a powder in blue. Well, nila, we call it anil. We call it anil. Uh, the green, uh, I don't know. It's some kind of herbs that she boil. And it's she- copper. The green, if well, if, if the green I'm thinking of comes out of copper, it's a bit, a little bit more toxic. It can be, it's if it's a bluish green, it comes from copper. If it's a yellowish green, it can, it can, it can come from yellow and, yes. and blue mixed together. But what I'm sure about it that it's all natural because she's using it since, let's say, 60, 70 years, and the colors are there still now. There, from some colors. They're still there. Made, yeah, she made some tests by hand, so. I can't see the colors still now. I'll share with you There's... those uh, technical names. Please, the, the and show me some of the carpets as well. 
Send me oh, a sure. picture of the carpets. Okay. I ins I get a lot of inspiration from from art um, artisan work. Artisanal, yeah. Artis and from my from my my trips as well. Yeah. Whenever I travel, I go. I, I I might seem a little bit crazy. Last time I was in Washington, it was the cherry blossom, and I was picking flowers from the from the from the floor, put them in, into a bag, and my my poor husband was like, "Everybody's gonna think you're crazy. You're gonna go with that into the plane. Everybody's gonna think you." <laughs> but I can't help it. I mean, if I see something beautiful and color, typical from a, from a city where I where from Doha, I brought some white sand and sand made of seashells. A tiny little, not much, because I couldn't gather it. But I also brought material from Doha. Anywhere I travel, I, I try to bring and I always make a painting with some of the material. So there is a painting for Qatar, the material from Qatar? Not, not yet, but I have the material. Okay. I still haven't made the one from Washington. I made the one from uh, Morocco, from um, Asila. I went to Asila and I brought the sand from the, from the beach and I brought the blue and also the yellow, the one they use for, for, for the walls. And I use those, you mix them with latex and you, I mean, you have to give it a try and see how it dries and it takes a while. No, from Doha, I haven't made a painting Vanita, yet. Vanita. The? Sorry? The Nili is not a blue. Nila, Nila or Nili the... is not a blue. Am I right? No, no. The color Asila. Nila or Nili. No, not Asila. Nila. You said before. Anil. Yeah, you... Anil. Anil is blue. Anil. Anil is blue. Anil. Blue. It is a blue? Yes. Because I think here we have it, it's, it's separate than the blue. I don't know here how, it but I'm a, uh, I about think it's here that you have in Tunisia. Yeah, here they use something similar, uh, closer to the blue. It's not a blue. They use it before, before uh, the women use it in their uh, uh, the way they wear in their face. It is kind of closer to the blue, but it's considered... The call has a different the, name. Neely. Like the call, call we use Neely. for a Neely. I don't know. No, 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 no. no. no it's just different. They use it, uh, the batula that they wear. Uh, previously, the woman here wears something called batula. And it, they use this color, which is kind of uh, closer to the blue. They don't call it a blue, they call it neely. Neely. Well, Maybe you it's have something to, totally different. You, yeah. <laughs> can you send me a muestra, a, 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 a tiny sample, with Carmen? I, a sample I'll with check. Carmen so I can see it. <laughs> I'll oh, check yeah. if it's available because this is very old. <laughs> oh, yes, um, that happened. Oh, my man. Go ahead. In, in Lisbon, two years ago, or a year ago, I was all over the old city looking because you have to go to the old shops and the old uh, um, where the workshops where they, where they sell the, the construction materials for the, for the... And I was crazy looking for a polder and I only found it like after I went to 20 old shops and because they that's what I mean by everything it's so mm, disnaturalized because it, we wanted everything so quickly and we wanted everything ready and we'd, it's more comfortable in a way but it's so much less uh, enjoyable and it's when you make the things slow, knowing the materials and enjoying it, it's like more beautiful. We still have a few minutes to engage. Okay. Well, Amayma, any comments? Thank you, Abdullah, for that. Um, I, Isabel, thank you Hello. so much. That was pretty amazing um, and very Hello, inspiring. Amayma. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank I would, would like to comment on something. Um, since you, you mix your yeah. own paints in your own very unique way, do you teach? Do you like have classes um, for, to teach people how to mix their I own paint? I do not. Interesting. Uh, pardon me, what's the last question? Mixture on paints? Sorry. But how to, yeah, do question? you have classes to teach people how to mix their own paints or, do you, or how to, to follow in your style? Do you teach people? I, the thing is, no, I don't teach ah. people. I am a loner. 
That's why I think I speak so much now because I'm always alone at my studio, listen to music. Um, I don't think I would have the patience to teach. Maybe if I had one student at a time, but sometimes if asked me if I could teach children, I've never tried. I don't, I don't know, but it's not the very, the most appealing thing to me because huh. I, I don't know if I know how to teach. I know. Oh, no, I, was, <laughs> I was, I was curious to know because you are um, very sustainable and uh, very maybe sus- what you could, the, yeah, the material you use are sort of um, organic and ecological and sustainable. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if people learn to mix their own paint at home using your style or your technique, you'd perhaps be spreading the, or supporting the cause for sustainability. That's just a, it's just thought. Yeah, probably. I haven't thought about that. Probably. Yes. But you know what people who want to do my style, which there has been a few, <laughs> um, they do it, but they just go and buy. They, they don't think I, don't, I, I have my, I do my 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 como se dice la cosecha the collection it's like in in October where you have all the, the harvest como se dice la colecta when you when you collect the harvest thank you thank you you have to be very tidy very conscious you have to know what time of the year you have this certain leave I also go to the carpenters and ask them for sea dust and the, the, for da, um, no dust how do you call the the powder that the the so wood dust. takes sawdust yeah. I, I also go to them and they give me uh, big bags of sawdust sand whenever you go to the uh, to the beach it depends on what beach do you go you, I always have sand in my car my car is always untidy with sand um, maybe people could do it if, if anybody had the if anybody wanted to learn it they, they would have to ask me I would say yes absolutely why not thank you that was great thank mm. you so much for this very inspiring yeah. thank you thank you Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, we still have five minutes to close. Nim. Yes, Jeremy. Abdullah yes. is speaking, I think. What? Abdullah is speaking. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. He was it's in okay, it's okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, talk, talk. Jabber. No, no. Oh. It was, no, no, it's just for you. Okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you for the lecture. Uh, if there is no other question. Yes, I think we need to... Uh, thank you for the first, lecture. Thank I want to say something to oh. Isabel. Go ahead. Thank go ahead. you. You are an artist, Isabel. I like too much your colors, your thank you. materials. Yes. I thank like too much to paint from my childhood. I, I paint too much. I like to watch well, your color. Keep on painting because it's very. No, I, my, my, it's my, like, daughter, my daughter starts to paint now. My daughter. Well, encourage her. Daughter, because, daughter. Yeah, encor- I, what I'm yeah. saying is that you. I wasn't encouraged enough when I was uh, 18. Mm-hmm. So I started a little bit later. I, I wish I had started when I was 18. I started when I was 20. 26, 20, yeah, after a long period of not knowing very well what to do until I finally did what I really wanted to. But it's important that you, if, if that's her dream and she does it well, encourage her. Or if it's yeah, her yeah. hobby, that she has it as a hobby, that she does it, that she enjoys. You have to enjoy what you do. I have a question for you Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wait, is there, do you have in common, do you have any architectural project now? Do you all work together or you just a community of architects that, that um, how, how this how how about, were organized? Yeah. How about architecture? Uh, it's a, like a society registered under the Qatar Financial Center, headed by Umayma and the board are Salim, uh, Jabir, Umayma, uh, Missed anybody? Uh, the rest are uh, members. Uh, we have uh, like a, a account, in, a Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, all over. And we have like a weekly two uh, talks: one on a Friday, one on Wednesday. The one on a Friday is more like an interview. The one on Wednesday, 
meeting like people like you, you uh, giving lectures. Uh, Hub is almost like I think uh, two years, two years old. Uh, am I right? More, more, doctor. More. Mayna, two years old. More. Uh, before, more. More. No, but registration. No, 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 registration. Registration. Do you, do the registration you know is just one year, but it's been going on for about four year. years one, now, one, and it's more years. than more than one year. And yeah. you live yeah. in Doha. You live in Qatar. Um, the, the most of us live in Qatar, yes, but uh -huh. the reach is global. And uh, maybe uh -huh. you would be would be interested to know that the idea started when I was studying in EA um, in Madrid. Yeah. In Madrid. Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and that's when the idea started. So you see, Spain is is very inspiring everywhere. In Spain, I agree that Spain is very inspiring. And you know what? Something that caught my attention in in Doha, there weren't art galleries. There aren't art galleries. I don't know if people in Qatar are so familiarized with the direct contact with with art. Now that you're doing a a center, a commercial center, what would could you propose to maybe some cultural space? I think art is yeah. important for all societies. It was, I tried to, there were wonderful museums, amazing, beautiful museums, but there weren't any art galleries. I was asking, where are the art galleries? And there were none. It's Actually there, a, I think there are some. Abdullah, maybe you can help oh. with that. I think there are some. Yeah, there I mean. Oh. There is one gallery in Qatar, uh, selling, selling, uh, selling, there is one gallery in Qatar next to uh, the Karak. There is a place where now they are posting all all your uh, uh, paintings for sale there uh, in Qatar. There is there is a uh, it used to be for Qatar Engineering Society. It's a uh, uh, building number twenty two, and yeah, and but there's selling, some more uh, selling its painting. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, there is more. Yes. This, this one at least yes. is well known in Qatar. Yes, there's Malhia right. Gallery and there's a fire station and there's yes, um, some, one, one called Anima Cafe, I think. No, you are Pearl. talking about selling. No, no, are you talking about selling painting or just galleries? Well, both exhibiting uh, and, uh, and and exhibiting and selling. As selling well. only in Qatar. There is like, there is like one show. Yeah. Exhibiting, there is a lot. In Qatar, there is at least uh, three locations for exhib uh, exhibition. And yeah. there is, okay, the uh, uh, fire. Station, Marquia yeah. Gallery, Marquia. Well, yeah, maybe, the, uh, the maybe then also. they didn't know how to. No, um, I even in, in the in the Pearl, there's Anima Cafe. I think it's called Anima, and they actually exhibit yeah. and they also sell at the same time. Yeah, as far as I understand. Yeah, okay. yeah if I could just add, I I work with the with the with QMA with the Museums Authority, and yeah, I mean just to echo what uh, Omeima has been saying is basically that we do have. You know, there's a number of exhibitions um, that we, you know, sort of started to put together, including fire station and other ones that have been mentioned. Yeah. But it is something that you know the state and the 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 authority are really trying to push forward with in terms of really promoting you know local culture, bringing into bringing in you know international cultures as as you would know. That's something that we're you know we've made I think a lot of progress in, and we're going to continue to push uh, to push forward with. Good, 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 good. Well, that was wonderful, really. It was. It was time flew. I, at the beginning, I didn't know if I was going to be able to talk for so long. <laughs> um, we have somebody think, from Qatar University. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my Hello. name is Jamal. I think Hello. the idea of art, art gallery in every major mall is a brilliant idea. Because this is to move uh, with society of... Uh, Consuming society, why not consuming art? Then we elevate or you get um, yeah, the society to another level. Just, uh, and actually, it's a really good idea because now what we have noticed in one of the well, exercises I did with my student, uh, people use these, the major malls for walking. So if yes, and for leisure, and leisure time. So you can yeah. go, go shopping you can go grab something to eat maybe you can even go to the exactly. cinema or you can go to a gallery yes because it's mo mostly now is to eat drink buy things but nothing for the mind so art gallery will be really good very not major not big one but no. small one where artists can expose their work and there are many uh, Qatari or local artists where 
when you make that, they, they make, now they, they use the, the fire stations are an art gallery, but it, you have to be very interested to get there. But to get And you have to go the there art. specifically. Exactly. Yeah. But if, uh, if the art cross your road, when you go shopping, you have more chances to get art into the public. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, then okay, do it. I'll help you. I will help you. Nice presentation. Thank you. I, I really Thank enjoyed you. it. Enjoyed looking at, and I, I think there are a lot of uh, influence of being raised in uh, Sevilla because there's a lot of connections with the, how to say, uh, the galaxies. There's a lot of history uh, yes but the, if i tell you the truth i don't know how it came the, when they at the beginning when they first came out i don't know why they came out as a galaxy and that why i thought and then i started thinking about the cosmos and yes. it's true that i've always been fascinated by the stars and the cosmos I don't there, know are if this has... of, hmm, there are a lot of scholars in uh, in sevilla they dealt with galaxies i mean the old time but i think that what the rest what was still there that influence you into looking at the galaxies probably it's a very it's, have you, if you've been to sevilla you know it's a very magic city it's so beautiful i know it's my city and it's not very modest to say it i don't live in sevilla anymore but anytime i go it's really overwhelming beauty and, i've um, been there several times myself i know quite well i've been several times to sevilla please, please okay. if you go again let me know and i will if if I'm in Sevilla, I will meet you personally, and if not, I will I will give you recommendations. Okay, very good. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah, my my art uh, my ara uh, uh, my Arabic art professor from the university. It's an excellent professor. He's in Sevilla, uh, and he mm -hmm. uh, he's a wonderful wonderful teacher. So maybe you could meet him. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. How about we close? Huh? Anyone have anything else? So, I yes, th thank you for the presentation. Looking forward to see you in Doha. Uh, thank you. Maybe we uh, more lectures about arts, uh, more things related to uh, buildings, architecture. Okay, uh, but you, I will uh, with pleasure. I will delight to do it. But if I have to give a lecture, please give me more time in advance so I can prepare it. <laughs> because I thought I just had to talk, and then two days ago, I was like, you have to have a presentation. Here. <gasps> oh my God, I have to have a presentation. I have to have a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I am very. I am very. I'm a very. I'm a very good student. So if I'm told to do something, I do it thoroughly. But I, I need time to organize. Please, I have two kids and a husband, and I. <laughs> there's a lot of work. Okay. I will. If you want uh, me to talk about Sevilla or architecture Sevilla or art, I will. Light, I will. Okay. Yes. Great. So I think we need to see uh, Sevilla buildings and city. I sent a picture, the first picture. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. yes I, saw. It, it, I saw. I saw. That was the mm. that was the mosque. And it has the, the famous, very, very famous uh, Alminar, que es de Giralda. Mm -hmm. Then in the 15th century, it became a cathedral. It's the largest Gothic cathedral in the world. And it's the third largest cathedral in the whole world. Only in the Gothic style is the largest one. Mm -hmm. And it, took, it was so huge and it took so long to, to build that um, it ended up at the, at the beginning of the Renaissance. And then it's got this beautiful, amazing patio de los naranjos, which means the orange trees courtyard, which is the Arab part. It was made in the 12th century, I think, by the Almohads. And then the Almoravids. Mm. Um, and it's like, it's like, it's in Paris, you have the Torre Eiffel. In Sevilla, you have the Giralda, which is the, the Alminar of the, of the, uh, of the, um, of the mosque of the of the cathedral now, mm -hmm. and we have uh, yeah we 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 lived with the, with the, for centuries. 
with uh, with the mixture of cultures. It's a it's a wonderful, wonderful city. It, it should be the the topic of the next lecture. It will. It will. So, yeah, yeah Alcazar is amazing. The Alcazar as well. The, but the Alcazar, I th yeah, the Alcazar was Almohad as well, and the Alcazaba. Yeah, and the yeah. Alcazar, I, I live very close to the Alcazar. Actually, from when in Sevilla, when I open the window, I go directly to the gardens of the Alcazar. So I've been watching that green and that garden every day of my life when I was growing in Sevilla. And the Alcazar, it's, it's just so beautiful. And, but then the Alcazar, is, it's quite changed with the decoration inside. Because the Catholic kings, when they came to Europe, got all the tiles in the, in the Renaissance style. And um, oh, it's beautiful. And you've got the walls. We've got many, many, um, um, we call them, um, see, I have to change the Spanish, hold on. Mudejar. Mudejar is the typical uh, Mudejar is the typical uh, Spanish Arabic art. It's the, the the art made by the Arabs when they were like for two two hundred years already in in Spain. Maybe they were doing maybe they were doing a church or they were doing a mosque, but it was a specific uh, style of art, and it's called Mudejar. Mm -hmm. I can show you. I can maybe I can I can send you. Uh, and it's a very beautiful lace work with the um, with the uh, bricks and with the stone as well. Okay. And it's very typical in all houses in Sevilla. It's very typical to have um, you have the, the the patio, the courtyard, and then the rooms. It's as in a Roman tradition house. And then then the Arabic tradition house where you where you um, when you enter in a we call it Eje Acordado, when you, you don't enter directly, you turn, you make straight and then a turn and you go into the house so that you don't sit straight from, from the outside. That is called Eje Acordado, which I don't know how to translate it. It means elbow and the axe. It's the, the it's uh, bent uh, entrance. Eje. How do you say Eje in English? It's, it's a, a bent a, entrance. There you bent go. entrance in English. Bent entrance. We have that from the Arab tradition. And it's very, very classical to have an Arab room with the mokarabs and, the, and the, all the decoration and all the yeseriyas and all the uh, that. I've grown up in Arabic is mokarnas. In Arabic is mokarnas. Mokarnas. And we call them mokarabis. Mokar, mokarabis. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, Alhambra, have... Alcázar. We have the topic of the next talk. You have a topic. Yeah. Islamic Islamic art in Andalusia. I love it. Yes. I love it. I oh, love okay. it. So, <laughs> I, really oh, I, get, I get carried away. I like it so much. <laughs> okay, okay. So I think okay. we are coming to the end now. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much for all the attendees. Thank you, Architect Abdullah, for moderating. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isabel, much. for being with us. My and pleasure. We, we hope to see you again. Presenter, we and we will send you for always our uh, updates. By the way, next please week do. We have, yes, by next please week, do. Yes, next week we have uh, an interesting talk with uh, the famous architect, the Qatari architect, uh, architect um, Ibrahim Al Jaida. Uh -huh. So it will be interesting talk. So I will send you the link. Please do. I will send the link to everyone and. We'll yeah. Next week, inshallah. I Thank will. You. I will. Inshallah. Thank inshallah. you very much. Shukram, good shukram. Good night. Good afternoon. Here it's good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> hola, hola. Hola, hola. Thank you very much. It was an honor. Thank you, Abdullah. Thank you very much, Salim. Th thank you, Isabel. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank See you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.